Welcome to Tutorial Vote in 22.6. In this video, I'm going to talk about working with reader input in SugarCube 2.36. So we've now seen how we can use the link macro to begin to add interactivity to a passage. Previously, when we worked with links and passages, we moved between passages using links. However, now we've started to see that we can use the link macro to add links that don't necessarily transition to other passages. And we've used those now in a couple of different examples to add interactivity to existing passages. There might be some cases, however, where we want to go beyond a link. We want to get some extra input from readers. For that, we have a number of different macros that will be examined across different videos. To start with, in this video, we're going to look at two particular macros to get text input from readers. And we're going to look at how we can use those and then follow it up with an example that shows how to use those in practice. So in this video, I'm talking particularly about the text box and text area macros within SugarCube. So let's look at each of these in turn. So the text box macro allows us to create a box where a reader can input words or phrases or some limited amount of text. So let's look at the macro and then let's look at what it presents to the reader. So we see the macro and it looks like this. It has text box and then it has the variable that we want to put the input into in double quotation marks. And we'll see that quite frequently as we look at an increasing number of macros that allow us to add interactivity to passages. We'll also see as a pattern here in text box, and again, repeating in future macros, that we have the variable and double quotation marks, and then immediately following that with a space after is whatever the default value is for that. Now, this is important because when we start to work with a number of different input elements and input aspects within SugarCube, things like text box, text area, and as we'll see more in future videos, we need to give an initial value just in case the reader does not interact with them. So keep in mind, we always need, we always need a default value some, just in case the reader doesn't interact with it. If they do, we can adjust other things, but if they don't, we always need that initial value. Now, the reason why I mentioned this in particular is because when we set that initial value, we are setting that initial value. So when SugarCube understands this passage, it will immediately set that variable, whatever we said to do, to that initial default value, just in case the reader doesn't mess with it. So let's go ahead and look at what the text box does in practice, again, mentioning words, phrases, or short amount of text, and that will make sense here as we see the visual representation. So I'm going to go ahead and start the story here in example one, this passage, and go ahead and build and play. So notice it's a text box, right? Some text. Notice it's not very long. So if I just hold the D key, we sort of just scroll off and it's kind of hard to see from there. So for words, phrases, or short amount of text, text box is particularly useful. Now, if we want larger amounts of text, then we can do it we can work with a second macro. So what if we wanted large amounts of text? Well, for that, we want text area. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to example three, and then I'm gonna circle back to what I discussed earlier because it will make sense when discussing both examples. So I'm gonna jump over temporarily to example three, and then we'll circle back to example two. So if we want words, phrases, short amount of text, we want text box. We want large amount of text, we want text area. Now the same thing right here, again, I have the variable that I want to store this in, in double quotation marks, and I also have the initial value of that. Again, just in case a reader does not interact with this. So let's go ahead and again, start from over here. Notice I now have lots of space to input things. Again, if we're working with words or phrases or short amount of text, you want text box. If you're working with a larger amount of text, you want text area. And notice I could put lots and lots of text here. Now, as long as I'm interacting with it, it, SugarCube is saving that value. And then when we go to transition to a new passage, it will then retain that in the variable. So if I'm over here to processing, we would see the corresponding value. But notice in this case, I put in a little bit different here. I've said if input is Jesse. So let's go ahead and play this again, except this time, it knows what I inputted. 
So notice whatever I put in this variable right here would then be adjusted so when we move to another passage we can then test the value. Notice right here we got Jesse. Now coming back to example two, let's look at the same thing for text box. So I'm going to go ahead and shift the start over here and then pull this up. And notice again, we're setting up an initial thing, moving over here, and it says, oh, you entered. Hi, Sam. And it says, oh, what did you enter? Now notice this particular example is using a pattern we've previously seen with the link macro. So as I just showed in example three, we can set a value in either text box or text area. Again, text box for shorter amounts, text area for larger. And then it transitioned to another passage to see that changed value. But we can also use a pattern we saw with the link macro. That is, we can retransition to the same passage. However, this requires at least two passages to set up this pattern. We've now seen it a couple of different times. Notice when I was looking at example to start, I was sitting the initial value of the variable. The reason I'm doing it in a separate passage is because now in example two, right here, text box, when we press enter, or otherwise concern is going to come back to example two. So now let's look at this one in practice. So we'll go ahead and start here, build and play. Go ahead and example two, enter your name. And let's say my name is Dan and I'm going to press the enter or return key depending on how your keyboard is set up. Oh, it just didn't do anything, it kicked us back. Well, let's go look at what it's looking for. It's looking for Sam. So, okay, if I entered Sam, you entered Sam. Hi, Sam. Notice in this case, like we've seen with the link macro, we can do a passage transition as a result of input. So if nothing happens, we have a default value. But if we pressed enter or return with the text box, we can then transition to a different passage and then see that value. Now notice this passive transition doesn't work for text area. So if we went to get the value for text area, we're going to need something else, a link macro or a link itself to go to another passage. But if we're using text box, we can press enter or use the return key, depending on how your keyboard is set up, and then see that, again, using that pattern we've now seen the link macro, to refresh or return to the same passage again to immediately see that value. However, keeping in mind that whatever value variable we set up needs to be set up in another passage. So this, this video discussed adding to our existing tool set for working with interactivity within Sugarcube 2.36. We've previously seen how we can use the link macro to create different things, combine the link macro with the if macro with the set macro, and now we can start to build even more complex stories by adding in a text box or words, phrases, or short amount of text or a text area for larger amount of text. Keeping in mind that text box, when we press enter or the return key, as long as it's high highlighted or selected on the screen, what's called giving it focus. We can then transition to another passage if we want to do that, but we can't do that with text area, which allows us to enter more text. So text box for shorts amount, text area for larger amount, and allowing us to now get text input from readers as we build interactive stories in Sugarcube 2.36 and Twine 2.6. Thanks for watching.